What is up, everybody? PC War Room or XJGNX uh, is my Steam handle, so you can always find me there. Um, more updates on the Cyber Power build, um, Crap Power build, I would like to call it, but uh, no, I digress. Uh, it is now officially dubbed the MSI powered build because almost everything in it is going MSI um, motherboard. I've got some. Uh, I'm getting ready to go with like a MCI mouse instead of the Corsair and keyboard. Uh, I just wish they did a little bit more accessories. But anyway, beside that. Um, just a quick recap, if you're new to the channel, haven't uh, watched any of the other videos, um, uh, my rig is now powered by B450 MSI Gaming Pro Carbon uh, AC Edition, um, Jill, Jill, however you want to pronounce that, uh, Evo X version 2. Of the RGB RAM, uh, uh, 3,000 megahertz, uh, eight gigabytes times two, and then uh, of course it's running uh, for the moment the uh, crap powered version of the RX 590. Uh, so that was just a pretty much recap on that. All right, if you're looking in front of you, um, if you guys had remembered, this system did actually have what we all think or thought was a master cooler, 120 uh, rad AIO, and uh, I kind of told you guys I was kind of up in the air about possibly swapping that out. Well, I did. Uh, I picked this thing up here uh, off of overclock.net. If you guys haven't heard of it, if you've got any information, if you've got any questions on overclocking, or you know you just want to learn some stuff. Uh, you know, builds, check out what people are doing, jump over there. I will drop a link uh, below. And, uh, but anyway, they do have like a, it, it, it is a forum. So, but, uh, they actually have a marketplace on their forum, which is actually pretty neat. And all the OCers and computer fanatics, uh, go there and sell some stuff. I mean, they, they've they actually, these guys here are actually better than eBay. Anyway, I picked this up. Uh, cost me $70. Um, the guy uh, said he really didn't use it uh, very long at all. He was just using it for testing purposes or something. Um, yes, I know I've got a bad habit. I'm smoking. Don't judge me. Anyway. Uh, I picked this up for $70. Uh, this is the Deep Cool Gamer Storm, uh, Captain 360 EX. It is white. Um, if you haven't noticed, I'm I'm, I'm trying I, I'm doing a white build, but the best thing is about the case being white, my RGBs can be any color I want. But for right now, we're going with a white white theme. Um. So anyway, uh, yes, this is a 360 millimeter radiator. Um, I do have melted at the top. Uh, sorry guys, I know I'm going to get some push on this. Why don't you mount it in the front? Well, because there was no room in the front. I could fit the radiator, but I couldn't fit the third fan. 
So, guess what? It had to go up top. Anyway. Uh, setup on this thing was actually not as bad as I thought. Um, I did see some reviews on this where people were saying that the cables, the hoses were too short. And I don't see how they were too short because, yeah, I've got plenty of room. I could actually have a bigger case if I wanted. Um, but, uh, actually, I'm impressed with this unit. Um, but, uh, like I said, pick it up for 70 bucks. And, it and the guy was actually honest about it. I mean... When it came in here, you couldn't even tell that the fans had even been put on the radiator. So, he either went and cleaned it really, really well, or, like he said, he didn't run it long at all, which I don't think he did. So. But anyway, uncovering the beast. Dog hair. Uh, the only bad thing was on this setup is that the fans are not RGB. Um, that uh, was kind of a letdown. So I'm actually using my PC cooler fans as the radiator fans. I've actually got the, the radiator fans. I've got one in the exhaust port here and I've got two more in the front uh, over here um, if you can kind of hear it it is a bit noisy but I think that's the PC cooler fans uh, they uh, because they these fans I mean they're ramping up to about 1930 RPM they're non-stop which is the way I've got it set and uh, I can't really hear the actual fans that were supposed to be on the cooler. And they're ramped up at 1800. So, but I'm kind, kind of impressed because I've actually got um, the two fans on the side as intake. And two in the front as intake. Which I will go in another video because apparently this case is weird as far as air, airflow. Just basically a quick roundabout. For some odd reason, this case likes straight up exhaust. I haven't figured it out either. But you would figure you would want an intake and an in out, you know in and out but no anyway uh, basically I've got uh, five fans as intake and then the three as exhaust and the only reason why I'm doing it that way is because this video card does not like a 360 millimeter radiator because if you have that thing as an intake and it's dumping the hot air in this card will start spiking at about 80 to 85 C um, and that is not overclocked and that's with the fans on this thing ramped up to a hundred as well so which I'm getting ready to change all that as well um, getting ready to upgrade power supply to upgrade the video card which i'm probably going to go with a seasonic 750 minimum because that's uh what the 5700 xt likes uh yes my my card um so i've got two more things i gotta do i got to get the um power supply and i'm going to upgrade the video card and I do believe when I do the video card, 
I am going to do the vertical mount. So, hopefully, a, a vertical mount will actually help blow some of the heat away. I mean, I'm not for sure. But we will see on that. Um, but anyway, back to the upgrades real quick. Uh, installation was actually kind of easy. It was a little, 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 little tight fit trying to get that thing wedged up in between the gap between the motherboard and the case. And it, I didn't think I was actually going to do it after I purchased the unit. But it was actually able to fit. Very tight. I mean, you're not going to fit no piece of paper in between them. Because uh, I do believe the fa yeah the two back end fans here and here are literally touching the heat sink at the top of the motherboard that says carbon on it um, that's how tight tight of a fit it is so uh, thermal paste application I used uh, thermal grizzly I used cryo knot which uh, I did buy the, the small one gram and uh, people said it would be enough. Well, apparently they didn't put enough in the tube because that definitely wasn't a gram. But I mean, temperatures are a lot better. I mean, I'm right now sitting at 26C on the CPU. And that's actually about 10 degrees lower than what I was running off of the 120 that was in this thing. And now my stuff is not overclocked. It is stock. Um, I'm not into the processor overclock just yet. So... I have put this thing through its paces, and again, I am impressed with the temps. Um, I've had it uh, pretty much uh, stressed. I waited for, oh, I don't know, I think I waited for about four to five days. Uh, I just did light work at first because I actually, even though the thermal paste said there was no cure time, uh, I did want to make sure that, you know, it was, it was good. So I played some, uh, you know, games like Rust, uh, Division 2, which always plays hell with the CPU for some odd reason, and uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And just basically kept an eyeball on it. And uh, yeah. And temperatures didn't really uh, go up very, uh, very much. Uh, they stayed right around the 39 to 42 ish which is uh i'm impressed with that and uh other other than that uh i did stress it uh stressed it for about 30 minutes and uh i the temp actually spiked i think once at 60 but, I mean, it immediately just bottomed right back out to about 39. So, I'm kind of wondering if maybe that was a thermal paste, possibly, or if that was just, you know, the pump. So, I, I don't know what exactly happened there, but I can take that all day long. I mean, if it's, it's just going to do that about once... And then bottom completely back out to about 39, 44, right in that area. I'm happy with it. So, a uh, pretty decent buy, um, and I like it. Now, one thing I will talk about 
shortly before leaving you guys is that the pump for the master cooler ran about 1900 to 2000 the pump on the deep cool setups which is what impresses me the most is it's ramp ramping up to about 23 to 2500 rpm so that's some massive uh flow keeping it uh, keeping this system freaking cool so um i'm not too keen of how they did the pump i mean i don't really like the whole weird looking tube coming out and i don't know it's just going to take some time to to actually get used to but it's a, it, for the money for what i paid for it used you know be careful if you do that um but for the money i paid for it i mean it, it's actually great so but anyway this is the update i will keep you guys posted uh two more items left two and then we'll see what this thing can really do so guys take it easy and i'll see you in the next video